that sexual slavery is part of the price of admission for the trip to Europe. So when you pay to be smuggled to Europe, you are as the, that, so that was a smuggler in that video there. They, they tell you, well, just in case you need to take contraception with you, some women on the eastern route coming out of Eritrea will, will take a contraceptive injection. On the western route, they will give you condoms or they will try and get you to start taking the contraceptive pill earlier on. And, and it, it just, it really stayed with us. I kept having these conversations with my boss, my wonderful um, boss, Debs Rayner, our head of news gathering. Uh, and it just felt like sexual violence against women is such an uh, accepted part of the price of admission of just being part of society that even when you are in these extreme situations, sometimes you, you yourself have to take a moment to think, no, this is, this is as appalling as men being auctioned off as slaves. This is sexual slavery, women being forced into brothels along that migrant route. And um, uh, my amazing boss somehow managed to figure out a way to agree that we would traffic ourselves. I mean, literally just onto the bus. So we met him uh, at the transport point, at, at a brothel actually. And interestingly enough, because, um, because I am from Sudan and I am very much the product of a very uptight mother, that was one of the worst parts of this for me. <laughs> having to explain to my mother that yes, I got trafficked. Yes, we did all of that. Mama, I was in a brothel. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. It's just, and she will be watching this and she will be very, very, very disappointed. Um, but we, so he, I mean, he, there, there was no pretense. This is where he plied his trade from. And we, after you saw that, um, he pulled me, he, he physically pulled me away from my amazing producer, Lydia Mikosa, who was also trafficking, her, trafficking herself with me. Um, because I think he clearly had decided that I was the vulnerable one. Because I was the idiot who was asking the stupid questions. Um, and I think when you talk about the facing change of foreign correspondents, we talk often about being women, being minorities. But also I think we don't put as much of an emphasis on the mask that you wear as a woman, of being constantly underestimated, and how much that informs the work you do, and how much that actually becomes part of your, your toolkit. So he, he pulled me to one side and was holding onto my arms, and he said, listen, I think he thought that I was gonna freak out, so he was like, listen, trust in God, it's all gonna be fine, and if you are raped, don't struggle. And then he just let me go. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and but, you know, that's the norm. That happens when you think about it. We have no idea how many women have, have made that trip to, to Europe. But let's presume that there are millions. And, and that's, not, that's, not a, that's not an exaggeration. Let's presume yeah. there are millions. So there are millions of women who have been raped multiple times en route to Europe. And yet when they get to Europe, or, or, or the women who come up the southern, Europe, uh, the southern route across the Mexican border into America are also sexually assaulted. Yet when they get here, we are constantly trying to decide whether they are worthy of this life that they are coming here for.